My name is Doug, aka Old Man, and this is my sailboat, a 1980 Endeavor 32. Her name is Sea Lily, named after my granddaughter. At the moment, I'm out at anchor down in Green Cove Springs. I'm testing my cruising philosophy, which is another video you can watch if you want to see what that's about. But in any case, today's video is going to be about my water maker. This water maker will make between three to three and a half gallons an hour and it will use about 16 to 17 amps per hour. The basic cost of the components is actually just under $1,400 but there will be a few other pieces that you're going to need so I just rounded up to $1,500. Let's take a look at what we have here. Here are the main components of a manually operated reverse osmosis water maker. You have a pressure pump, you have a pressure vessel, and you have the reverse osmosis element. Those are your three main components. The other things you'll need are a pre-filter, a booster pump, a pressure gauge, a needle valve, and this is recommended by Pump Tech, the makers of this pump. This is called a pulse dampening hose. Next, I'm going to show you how it'll be configured in the system and what each component essentially does. But first, I want to have a little discussion on what exactly is happening in here. Okay, so seawater is pumped into the pressure vessel and it essentially surrounds this element. At the opposite end, you have a needle valve and a pressure gauge. Well, actually, let me swap this around. It would be like that. You have a needle valve and a pressure gauge and you are going to restrict the flow out of this vessel. What that will do is as you raise the pressure, that seawater is forced through the outside of this vessel to the inside where you capture that as product water or fresh water in this case. Basically, this membrane stops all the larger particles such as salt, pathogens, bacteria, everything that you don't want to drink. And that in a nutshell is how this system works. Now I'm going to lay it out and show you how it would be plumbed in. In my particular configuration, yours will be similar, but there will be some differences obviously depending on where you're going to mount it and how you're getting your seawater to the pump. But let me show you what I've got. All right. This is where my system will be mounted in the upper half of my bilge and the first step of course is to get seawater to the system. Now there's a variety of ways you can do that. Some people have a dedicated through hole, some people will share one. I plan on sharing one and essentially I'm going to be teeing into the sink drain in the head and I'll show you that very quickly. All right, so as I said, I am teeing my seawater supply into the sink drain. And essentially, I have this monstrosity that will get plumbed into here, and this hose barb that is, is here now will go into this. Sink drain will come straight down. I can shut off the seawater supply to the water maker. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way, one, because it works for me, <laughs> everybody's installation is going to be a little different, and two, 
because when you get done making your fresh water, you want to flush the system with some of that fresh water. You want to get the salt crystals out of your water maker, out of the pressure pump especially. Pump Tech highly recommends that fresh water flush. So you're gonna wanna run a gallon or two of your product water through the system when you're done. The easiest way for me to do that without a whole lot of extra plumbing is I will be able to shut off the through hole from the sink drain and fill that sink with fresh water, with product water, and run that through the system. It's just super easy and it'll do the job and it doesn't require a whole lot of extra plumbing. I like it and it's what I'm gonna do. So your system may be different, but that's how mine's gonna work. Now, once we get the seawater headed this away, the first thing it's gonna do is go into the booster pump. Now, here's one of the things that I'm installing that's somewhat optional, but I'm gonna put this pressure gauge in line between the booster pump and the pre-filter. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that I can keep track of the pressure and I'll know when this filter is getting dirty. All right, now once we come out of the pre-filter, of course, we go straight in to the pressure pump. And this is again where you're gonna need some of these extra little fittings, little stainless steel hose barbs and a few things like that. Some miscellaneous stuff and that's gonna vary from installation to installation. For the pump itself, you'll even need a few stainless plugs because the pump is set up with two inlets and two outlets. You only need one of each, of course. From the pump, we're going to be going into this pulse dampening hose. And the reason you have this hose is because this is a piston pump. You've got a piston going back and forth, so it essentially pumps by spikes, okay? And that's not necessarily a good thing for your element. So we use this hose, it's recommended by Pump Tech. It's made to handle the pressure. So from here, we're going from there, over here to the pressure vessel itself. It's a straight shot right over to it. Now, once we get into the pressure vessel, you're gonna need a couple of more little fittings. The way this vessel is constructed, the outlets are recessed into the end. So you'll need fittings in order to bring your gauge and needle valve outside in order to be able to hook things up. But essentially, as the water comes out, you're gonna throttle it down using the needle valve till you reach 800 PSI, which is the point at which you're making good water. Now, the outlet of this is essentially brine and you're going to want to run that somewhere mine is going out to a through hole on the transom and the other outlet is going to be your product water mine is going to go to a hose that i'll be able to put to various places whether i'm filling a jug whether i'm filling my water tanks whether i'm filling a bucket to do laundry just options is that's how i'm doing mine but that's pretty much all there is to this. It's really a simple system when it comes down to it. There's eight basic components and, and that's pretty much it. A couple of things I forgot to mention <laughs> before I get into the cost. Sea strainer, just a very small sea strainer uh, to obviously filter out any bigger particles before you get to the pre-filter. This actually came with another pump but they're extremely cheap, $10. It's part of the miscellaneous $100 that I put on there. And also, another really good video about this same system is done by a guy named Andrew, and their channel is Abroad Reach Travel. I would also recommend watching that one. He installs his system a little bit differently than mine, so maybe that'll conform more to what you have to do for yours. Now also, this is based on an element that they call a 2514, which has to do more with the size of the pressure vessel, actually. It's 2.5 inch diameter by 14 inches long pressure vessel. People have used the 2521s, okay? And you might get a little bit more flow, 
but you tend to do a thing that is called overrunning the element. There's a certain ratio between brine to fresh that you want to adhere to for the best life expectancy of the element. And the 2514 size is what is really the best size for this. All right, let's get into the cost because I know that's what everybody wants to talk about. Ugh, all right, let's talk money. <laughs> so the most expensive component, of course, is the pump. That is the PumpTech 107 SS model. It's fully stainless steel. It should last for years. That pump I bought from Schooner Chandlery and it was $629 plus shipping. I don't include the shipping on this because it's going to vary. So I'm just going with the basic price of most of this stuff. The next most expensive components, of course, are the pressure vessel and the uh, membranes. Now, I bought mine from a company called Water Anywhere and they offer a discount of 10% on your first order. So I went ahead and bought two elements just to have a spare, but I did not include that discount or the second element in this price. Essentially, the housing itself was $330 and the membrane was $250. And I'm rounding a lot of this stuff up. All right, the pulse hose was $50. I bought that from a company called Sprayer Mist, I believe was the name of it. Just do a search for Pump Tech Pulse Hose. You'll find it. Uh, they have a couple of different leaks. I got the one in the middle because that's what worked for me. Uh, okay, the feed pump, Amazon buy for $40. And something important about that feed pump, it's a centrifugal pump, okay? It's not like your fresh water pump for your galley that is normally a diaphragm pump. A diaphragm pump with the pressure regulator is going to come on and go off and come on and go off. And that would cause your outlet pressure to vary constantly and you'd never really end up with some good water. So you want to make sure you get a centrifugal pump. The pre-filter and the filters also Amazon. The pre-filter itself, I actually bought two. They were two for 50 on Amazon the filters themselves. Now, a lot of people will have two and three filters. I'm only going with one. It's the end one, the five micron. Some people will start off with a 30 and then go down to a five. They'll go 30, 10, five. I'm just going with the five. Filters are cheap. I bought half a dozen for $5. If you clog it up, you toss it, you get put in a fresh one. It's not that difficult. Uh, the gauge was $10, you know, 11 11.50 maybe. Uh, the needle valve was $35 and you could go up on quality on that um, but this will do the job. Once it's running it really doesn't change that much anyhow. So the needle valve was $35 and that's the basic components okay. Round them off and it comes up to $13.95. I added another $100 for the various little fittings that you're going to need. The T where the pressure gauge attaches. Um, you'll need that little extension pipe to get outside the housing and the little plugs and the hose barbs. A few things like that. So I added in another $100 comes to $14.95. Now there are going to be other expenses and they're going to vary a lot depending on what you want and where you're putting it in your boat. That sort of stuff is in the miscellaneous cost for me. Uh, on the electrical side of things, I have a 30 amp breaker that I'll be using and it feeds two switches, one for the pressure pump and one for the booster pump so I can control them separately. Now that of course is going to change a lot depending on your installation also. But those were only $60, so it's not a big expense. So, all that being said, that is your water maker. It's really a very simple system when you start looking at it. There's not a whole lot of complexity to it. It's much less complex than a diesel engine, let's put it that way. So I hope this helps you. I hope that you decide you can do this and have some fresh water for your cruise. 
old man over and out.